got to check out this beautiful hotel. Far too posh for an idiot like me. <laughs> nice one for letting us have a look around. This thing's nearly 50 years old. I mean, that's got one thing even yes. worse than that. The interior's not like bad, is it? Considering the age. The, the workshop is awesome. And there's a picture of the car in the competition. Hot Wheels. Yeah. yeah. I've got a few of them. Declan's going to be taking me for a spin. Oh, Sitting on the Omega rim. Yeah. Kevin in the camp and help putting some drift parts yeah. on it. Like. <laughs> Morris Minor. Granny Hurst. Here's a day looking one of these. Bad boy bonnet. <laughs> Got your own scrapyard, like. <laughs> Somewhere that I do recognise. One of the owners, so. Loads of car signs. Size of SO. Oh, there you are. There's two Ford. Here's a moment really for you. Are you sure? Oh, wow. Thank no you so problem. much. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and I'm now starting day three of my island trip. That does mean I've got to check out this beautiful hotel. Awesome hotel. Far too posh for an idiot like me. <laughs> All right, so after a long drive with a stop off for some breakfast on the way, we've made it to Declan's place. Nice one for letting us have a look around. And Declan's got a couple of really nice escorts for us to have a look at and a couple of transits at the back as well. So over here, we've got a Mark II Escort that Declan used to actually compete in. He's a bit of a drifter. And yeah, looking awesome in the bright green paintwork. It's actually got a Vauxhall lump in the bay, quite high spec. Declan was telling me that it's got the Frontier yeah, bottom end. Yeah, it's crank, yeah. Bored to the max, around 88 mil. So it's, it's achieving almost 2.3 litres, 2288cc. Some steel rods, obviously, it's dry sumped and throttle bodies. It's a CNC ported head on, there's oversized valves there, so. It's putting about 255 horsepower and about 203 foot pounds. So the torque obviously was a big thing for yeah. lifting. So even down low, it pulls real strong. You know? yeah. yeah. As you can see, it's running on Gen V throttle bodies. Got a really nice alloy rad in there. Remote mounted oil filter. And yeah, for a drift car, it is absolutely mint. Although nowadays it is just a bit of a toy. It was a bit of a toy. Couple yeah. of track days, couple of drift track days, a um, couple of the runs. We're, uh, we're all members of the uh, Irish Escort Owners Club here yeah. at the page on Facebook. So some great events all over the country. Going to a really good one tomorrow, organised by Damien McLaughlin, Donegal and his team. So yeah. some great driving roads, just good fun. At the front, you can see it's got the front spoiler, nice carbon bumpers. Car's actually sitting on 8J mini lights. And it's got a narrowed rear axle so that the eights fit, although the arches have been rolled. But yeah, we'll take a look inside. Really stripped out cockpit. Quite an extensive roll cage. See all the plumbing running down the tunnel there. That's actually a sequential gearbox. And of course, got a fly off hydraulic handbrake. All the switches on the dash and stuff. Pair of Sparco Evo bucket seats and harnesses. The car is six linked. You can see the turrets there. But yeah. Awesome bit of kit. 
Got the RS boot spoiler on the back. I think I will have a look underneath at the six linked rear axle. Declan was telling me it's not your average six linked rear end, but I'll let him explain <laughs> what that's all about. I do narrow the casings and the axles, obviously there's, there's two piece shafts and there's three J diff. It's running the big 18 tooth diff with the big journals and the big shafts. It's basically your six link like you're having a group four rally car and I've got a roll bar there from Torsen and group four fabrications. It, it should be one that's been originally designed for an Atlas axle but I've sort of modified it to work with the English back end rather than it being mounted on the axle and drop linked up to the chassis legs. I've got it mounted on the, on the actual car itself and drop linked down. Uh, I just fitted it when I was competitive drifting just to carry the bit of speed transitioning one way to the other. I just seemed to be didn't seem to be flowing as much as I'd like, so I put the biggest roll bear Torsen had in stock there just to in the back. Again, I got a roll bear kit in the front. It's also on um, tension struts in the front. Yeah, yeah. Old time kit, and I've got lots of caster in there, as you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The front has been wide tracked, as you can see there. It's, it's out probably a couple inches more in the front than the back, so it was never off the shelf drift parts meant for an escort, so it was a case of just playing with it and adapting parts really to, to work, you know. Mm. So. I had, it, I had it to a point I dialed in where it couldn't be really much better, so still an enjoyable car, really mm. enjoyable car to drive. We, we do the retro stock track day you now at least once a year. It's uh, an event in Mondello Park there every Tuesday, September, October time, but it's, it's drift and grip, but it's all retro cars, retro cars in the paddock, you know, escorts. Yeah, I've seen the videos of that yeah. event, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's good fun, and we've got the whole international track to ourselves, so yeah. it's, like, you know, when, when you were doing competition, you had to do certain things, take certain lines, some of these drift track days, you can just do whatever you want, you yeah. know, just have a mad time really, you know, so. Yeah, I will just have a little nosy under the front at the trick front suspension bits that Declan was just telling us about. So yeah, you can see it's got a tension rod yeah. here, and then the anti-roll bar is drop linked. Got short just here and there for more of that. Oh yeah. As a small hole and shell, we, uh, we take them out to large hole to be able to put the centric mounts in, but also when we're going from small hole to large hole, I actually got them out a bit further and back a bit yeah. in the natural position for, for more camber yeah. and, and, and cast, cast off. off the wide track, you know. Yeah. Properly set up car in terms of suspension. Yeah. You know, because as I say, this was a competition drift car, but for a drift car, it looks stunning. Over here, we've got Declan's Mark One Escort, which is more of a road car, although it's still a really, really cool spec. It's got a Vauxhall red top in the bay, running on Gen V throttle bodies. This is a bit of more of a mild engine. Pretty mild engine. It's, it's basically a standard engine, just freshened up with just with new rings and stuff. I've got fast road cams and verniers in there, just to up the rev limit a little bit on it. But it's a real tractable, lovely engine. It just runs like a modern car, really down low, and the fuel injection and stuff. So. It's making about 180 brake horsepower, which is yeah, still plenty. It's got a 2.8 Capri Type 9 box in with a slightly higher Longer first. first gear, yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty it's pretty good through the gears. Suspension, as I was saying, it's just on roller tops. It's, it's on coilovers, all right, like Capri legs converted. Yeah. And I just, again, coming from the drift background, <laughs> have a good bit of camber dialed in there, but I think it fills the Mexico wings pretty nice. Yeah. Because I have seven and a half copies on there. Again, I have a narrowed back end in there. I don't have two-piece shafts in that. I just have Anglia van. 46 and a half inch. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Anglia van shafts and just a, an ordinary plate limo. But this is still on leaf springs and stuff, this isn't it? This is on it? leaf Sorry. springs and tramp bars. That's yeah. And just the standards, the early shell, so it's got the, it's got the angle shocks. Oh right, so okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you say it's your tame road car, but it's still, yeah. it's still it's <laughs> yeah. quite a serious spec. We will have a little look inside. The cockpit's definitely a bit more comfortable than the other it one. Is. I'll give you that. I'll yeah. give you that. It's got RS1600 i Mark three seats, uh, just recovered in leather. Very so nice. it has the old period look at the roll top. It's a lovely seat, really comfortable seat. I've got a six clock twin cam dash in there. It's a valuable item nowadays. Yeah, Gucci part that is. <laughs> that, uh, about 17 years ago, the early days of eBay, I think it was like 60 quid. That's probably seven, 800 quid now. And the rest. And the rest. <laughs> got the rear seat fitted. Just a really comfortable place to be. But yeah, those clocks. <laughs> Got an RS steering wheel as well, got the RS style centre console, so a fiberglass copy. But the retro sound radio on there that looks like the old radio. All right. It's actually Bluetooth and there's a USB input for it there as well, hidden. All right. So, oh, cool. So I'm a bit of comfort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's really cool. A lot of thought gone into this car. Beautiful. Over here, we've got a couple of transits. <laughs> this one looks like a bit of a Royal Mail van. 
It was just a standard uh, two litre Pinto, um, just a st standard little van. I think it was actually a carpenter or something. I've got it now about, oh, I must have it 15 years. I was just getting into drifting when I bought that. So I basically built that as my tow van. Smiley turbo diesel engine in there. All right. So it pulls well. Just lowered it on a set of banded steels. Decambered the four springs. I've got a Recaro seat in there for a bit of comfort. And then I have it all decked out in the back. For the track work, basically. See, I've got a few bits there. Awesome. What an awesome support vehicle. A drift track day now, you'd yeah. see to be about two dozen wheels and tyres in yeah. there in the back and a few bits, so yeah. That's puck, I love all the stickers on the side yeah. as well. <laughs> really cool. I wouldn't be big for putting stickers out, say something, but I like yeah. the vans inside, you know. You know, I have to look at photos on Facebook from years ago of these vans, that were, these were the vans, weren't they? In the back of the rally days and stuff, the support vehicles or service vans, whatever, so. I've always said it's my dream, like to have like a Mark 1 Transit camper yeah, you know, to really go Santa cool. Pod and all that yeah, for the weekend. Really cool. But I'd have to say, if I had a red one, it would have raw male decals on it. <laughs> but I'm an idiot. <laughs> and then we've got this crew cab pickup. I yeah, this, you is, that, this right? is the next project I intend to build. Right. I don't know when I'm going to get time, but I've been watching out for one of these for years. This one actually came from the south of Italy because I always wanted a crew cab one. They weren't really out of the factory, uh, the Mark 1 Transit, in, in crew cab form. They were coach built, so they were actually made up out of a, a van or whatever. So I wanted a bull nose. I like the bull nose front. I can get a decent stove in there, either a V6 or diesel or something. So they were only actually made for the Italian market with the, the bull nose front. You'd see them in Germany, the X Fire vans and stuff, but they were all petrol, they were all flat front. So it's going to be a mega rear. I'm probably going to take that body off, extend it build a recovery body like a, for carrying a retro motor or whatever. So I'm going to just build it into a retro recovery truck eventually, put a nice color on. It'll be really nice, I think done. Ah, fair play. But it's, it's a long way down the road, but I've been years looking for one. So once it's in the car, well, that's there, the first stage finding exactly. one, isn't it? <laughs> you can't build one until you found one, can it's you? It's a blank canvas and I have it there and it's mint. Like yeah. as you can see, the paint's just sunburned off it. There's yeah. no, no huge amount of work in yeah. terms of metal work. Well, obviously, these things got a hard life because they're yes, work around. So, yeah. you know, the fact it's still around is, yeah, is something. It's, it's it? as it is. You can see the bonnet there, the leading edge. Like, this, thing's, this thing's nearly 50 years old, but you can see, like, it's. Yeah. It's, like the, it's perfect. We can only dream of that. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the stuff we have, you know. Yeah. I mean, escort ones are normally yeah, worse than that. Yeah, gone there. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, it's got an old York diesel, a lazy old thing. It's right. Definitely something better going in there. <laughs> and obviously, you have to put it right on drive. That's oh, right. Yeah, it's a left hooker. But, uh, I've got a donor at home that's basically fallen to pieces, but it's, it's got all the parts. It's got the dash, it's got the steering column, pedal box. So, I'm just going to basically right and drive it. Yeah. I might just right and drive it first and drive it like that for a while. With the right that would be cool. Just this that would be thinking. cool. I might do that for a couple of summers. Yeah. Awesome. It's never been took apart or anything, it's, it's as it was. Yeah. You know, it's original vehicle. The interior is not like bad, is it? No, Considering the age. Bad. No, no. Really old school dash. Again, the dash is pretty symmetrical, so I can cut the piece out of the far side to put over the clocks and stuff. I don't have yeah. to remove the whole dash. Panel, All right, cool. Which is handy. Yeah. Again, the Fords is. That's the great thing about these Fords. They left them very simple for those of us that like to tinker. You know? Yeah. They done it to save themselves money, but it but it, <laughs> but it helps it helps yeah. us out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can see it's got a really really long pickup bed on it. Yeah. But yeah, it would look awesome as a recovery truck. Parker. I've got to say the the workshop is awesome in itself. Yeah. Panels, panels and stuff up there, neatly arranged. Got a really tasty looking That's exhaust nice manifold. manifold for another build, yeah. Oh yeah. Labelled boxes. It's what you do when you don't want to lose stuff. I've actually found stuff while tidying through here. When I was doing builds, I was asking guys around the country, uh, I'm looking for certain bits, even interior bits. And then I went tidying my own stuff. Yeah, I've when, when you don't need them anymore. I had the stuff. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Nah, it's a nice space. Loving the Ford badge yeah. up there. <laughs> and got some really cool photos on the wall. Awesome. A couple of transits there. Rothmans Mark II Escort Rally Car, old Shell sign, Escort RS2000 poster, another really cool transit. Joey Dunlop, the road racer, that was his service band back in the oh, 70s right. and 80s, yeah. Joey Dunlop from Northern Ireland. Again, that's oh. a painting I got. I just had it on Facebook, I just said I have to have that. So, Sierra Cosworth poster, Dunlop sign, yeah, cool stuff everywhere. Check all this stuff out. Awesome. These are the runs that you've been there's on, yeah? There's the runs, there's the end of showing that we're yeah, going on. That's where we're going this weekend. As you can see, weekend. I've been on a good few. Yeah. <laughs>
been at the Lakes Tour one year. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen that on the internet. Yeah, yeah. I've been on the Snowdonia Tour down in Wales. Uh, there are awesome. other local runs we've got here. The oh, there's a picture of my car in competition back oh, in the yeah. day. 13, 14 years ago when it was all stickered up and stuff. Is that an A86? That's an A86, yeah. yeah. Pretty good going car at the time as mm -hmm. well, yeah. And check out the Hot Wheels. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a few of them. Yeah. Oh, out here, we've got a old school Vauxhall Cavalier. That was actually built from a new old stock shell, apparently. Yeah, it looks like Declan's going to be taking me for a spin in the green car. Lucky me. <laughs> oh. It's a young man's game jumping in and out of these cars. Right, all these, all these cars I've been in this week, it's going to make mine feel easier yeah. to get in. You know what I mean? You go home, yeah. Get the first one warmer up. Yeah. I've never tried it, but I'm scared uh, if I fit it, I'm gonna not I like it. I had it in an escort van a while back. It worked all right in that because I had a lot of camber in it, so yeah. it sort of overrode it. But generally, I prefer the feel of this without. If you're oh. really on the limit on the track, if nothing else pulling you except the rack, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just. Well, that was an awesome joy ride. So now we'll say goodbye to the fleet here, and uh, Declan's gonna show us something else. I do like that Cavalier sitting on Omega rims. And it's called Kevin the Camper. Kevin the Camper. Kevin yeah. the Camper. Another Mark 1 Transit, this time a Camper. Awesome. And what lumps is this in it? This is a 1.7 uh, Zuzu turbo diesel. Right. I've uh, done a few conversions of these engines. Uh, real bomb proof little engine. About 90 brake horsepower when you wind up the pump a bit. But they go real nice. Um, it's a good, good few mods to get to fit. You now I had to make up mounts and stuff. The great thing is being a Mark 1 Transit, being a BMAX in Transit, we didn't need to mod the sump because there's lots of clearance there. So that's one good thing. Uh, it's got a Mark III Transit uh, Type 9 gearbox, which right. we've Mark III's for a couple of years, believe it or not. So I'll show you the box, it's a quite interesting box. Did the rad come out of the... That's like, an Astra Suzu rad. Oh, uh, Astra. Yeah, it's an Astra rad, a slimline fan. We had yeah. to cut in the manifold for clearance and stuff, and we just got a straight pipe. It's not intercooled, it boosts up quicker actually, just without an intercooler. Right. So basically, Ford were great for getting around, cutting corners when they were uh, yeah. in a corner. Um, when the Mark III Transit van came out in room 86, to replace the, the Mark II. The Mark II van always had a four-speed box. And uh, when they brought out the Mark III, they had the MT-75 box, which we all know up yeah. to the common day, the Allied body box. That was in development, but that box wasn't ready until around late 87, 88. So when they were bringing out the new van, they wanted to actually offer a five-speed option in the van, even though it was going to be a temporary one. So they basically took a Type 9 diesel box, took the uh, tin top off the top, took the bar out for the selector, just put on a blank, tail housing oh yeah and it's like a cast plate that bolts down and it goes in at 90 degrees here there's meant to be a little selector in there and the gear stick basically comes up from underneath yeah i'll show you the box i've fitted in the van yeah. but real neat and again they left it in the same spot as the mark II floor pan again ford didn't change much yeah so for conversions like this vehicle 50 year old vehicle 
don't want to go cutting, drilling new holes, moving gear sticks. You look into the van and the van looks pure original because yeah. the stick comes up in the original spot. So I'll just show you from underneath the other box. That's just a dummy box I had for mocking up, but yeah. I thought it was really clever what they did. No, it, it is, it's, actually, it is, it's interesting. They used the box they had yeah. and they just basically made a couple of bolt-on items to, to use the box in a, in a transit van, so. It looks totally original inside, because again, the gearbox comes, the stick comes up in the original spot on the floor. So, no, it's, it's almost a 50-year-old vehicle, so even the engine mounts, everything's bolted on, there's nothing cut or welded or... Mm. I love it. A, it's a sort of a retrofit, you know? I love it, man. <laughs> With the wood on the dash and that. Yeah, it's sort of cool. Really cool. Quick poke around the, the back. That is awesome. Oh my God. Imagine this for a Santa pod. Got air suspension fitted to the back. Nice. See the pressure gauge on the oh, dash. Yeah. Put a gauge in the dash. <laughs> Again, you see we actually just left down the bags. That's to let down suspension. So it's got all the solid and bits. Yeah. Relays in there. <laughs> yeah, it still looks original, but yeah, it's got all the, trick all the mud cons. Are they the original steels? Right? The original steel is banded. Oh, they've been banded, yeah. With the chrome hubcaps put back on. I'm going to show you the box with to get an adapter. It's not fair, I'll finish now. I'll just finish it off. I think I'm going to spend about a week test driving it and uh, yeah. I'm going to get a few days out for myself yeah. before I hand it over. So it'll be a win win situation. Yeah. If we get some of this weather, I'm going to go off. Oh, yeah, because this is not yours then? It's not mine, it's oh. a good friend of mine actually in right. Northern Ireland. Right. Long from America. Uh, he done all the wood in the back, done all the camper section, so basically <laughs> Fix this the prop is all, that's the big prop, that <laughs> be shortened. Um, here's the gearbox. Can I do the dashboard? <laughs> this is the gearbox, that's a, a Vauxhall, uh, because the Zuzu engines were supplied to GM, yeah. Vauxhall, they were made with a Vauxhall bolt pattern, so it's running, uh, I can use the XE bell housing, that's the same bell housing you see to put a, an XE into a, on a Type 9 or an yeah. Escort. Now, as you can see, the diesel flywheel was really, really close. I had to make, just sort of skim so much off there, but it just clears. Yeah. I just put that guard on in case someone get caught in the ring yeah. and it's running. <laughs> yeah. But uh, again, you can see the gearbox there. It just fits so nice in the original uh, spot on the floor. I had to get then, that yeah. spacer plate made. So then, like you're saying, this basically then means that the gear stick is in the right Up place. in the original yeah. spot, and I'm not cutting anything. Yeah. And again, the mounts are all made to bolt in the original spot. And yeah. Made all those. So again, there's nothing... You can Still rubber out. mounted and that as well. Exactly. So, yeah. They're actually a Nissan Silvia S14 oh, yeah. engine mounts because they've got the wedges in them and the, the damp will have vibration. Couldn't help putting some drift parts yeah. on it. Like. <laughs> it, just, it just happened that they worked really yeah. well because I, in my Escort van project before I built with the diesel, it was almost an idle. It was winding down the windows on its own. Yeah. Vibration was going in through the, through the, the van. So I found that those mounts have really good damping qualities. The fact yeah. that they've got those, of course, they take big power as well. And yeah, yeah, of course. It too. Yeah. So the engine is definitely in there, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, I just made up the mounts, as I say, the, the original cross member for the V4 just bolted up there. So if you ever wanted to put the van back originally, you could. You could, yeah. Even though is, once you get used to driving it. with that engine, <laughs> yeah. you don't want to drive nice. You know. Leaf spring Leaf front. Leaf spring front, and <laughs> the beam back in. Again, it's got drum brakes, so I've just brakes to go on there off a Mark II van, just to upgrade it. Yeah. And we've got the airbag suspension, as they say, fitted in the back. Oh, yeah, we can get a better look at that. Yeah. Oh, we've got the airbags in the back just to... Awesome. Again, the body's quite heavy, so... All right, now we do need to go and get out of Declan's way, but check this out. Have you ever seen a Morris Minor sitting on mini lights? And it actually looks quite cool. That Morris Minor belongs to Declan's oh, well, sister. That's a really, really hanging escort van, but I've got some bits, you know, I've got a lot of bits over there. I've got the front over it. Was this Mark 1 or Mark 2? I this know they're the same. One. It oh, was right. a Mark 1 van, yeah. Here's the old granny hearse. 2.3 V6, but it's manual, so it's got the manual flywheel and the box and stuff, so that, that's a donor for something. <laughs> Quality. Now, I have a guy looking one of these for his transit project, believe it or not. Oh, there you and go. He's coming to run tomorrow in Donegal, so. There you go. To make his day, silly little thing, but it yeah. finishes a project. <laughs> so, yeah, I've just got donors. A Mark 1 pop top camper, but I've got a lot of stuff out of that, but it's, it's yeah. hanging, as you can see. Yeah. What's this? The green that's, one? That's actually the same as my Mark II Cavalier. So again, it was a bit of a donor when I was building the Cavalier. Not much of it left now. later Cavalier. Later Cavalier. Obviously. Just for engines and running gear. Sort yeah. Of thing. Um, that's an old Mark III I bought for very little. But again, when we're building the other one, we probably need little clips and bits and pieces. Yeah. So I'm a bit of terrible Mad Max job of trying to customise it. You can see oh, yeah. the bumper and stuff. <laughs> Bad boy bonnet, they used to call that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, back in the day, all the mesh and Halford's finest. <laughs> and obviously later transit, because I've got loads of bits of these and the older ones. Oh, awesome, man. You've got your own scrapyard, like. Yeah. <laughs> That's nuts. Just, just a bit. It's nuts. <laughs> ambulances and stuff, and they've got they have the turbo diesels in them, a lot of them, some of them have. Oh, used. right, yeah. Oh, that's where I get them. That's the way the national health told it. Yeah. <laughs> Declan, I know you, like Porig, needs to go and get your car ready yeah, for go this weekend. Ready, yeah, yeah, massive thanks for showing us around. I really appreciate that. My pleasure, guys. And I'll pleasure. see you at the run and show. Bright and early in the morning. <laughs> Well, how good was that? Another couple of really cool escorts and I was lucky enough to get a passenger ride in one of them. That green Mark II is a proper weapon and Declan definitely knows how to drive it. And it was really cool to have a look at the transits and check out his own scrapyard. And that Mark I Transit camper is also really cool. Porig's brought me to somewhere that I do recognise. This was one of the stops on last year's summit run. I'm assuming it will be one of the stops this year as well. Yeah, this thing is jam packed with cool memorabilia and signs. One of the owners, Sue. Yes. Yeah, loads of random stuff in here. But yeah, this is the best bit in here. Loads of different car signs and you know, dealer signs, <laughs> all different stuff. <laughs> Size of that SO one. It's obviously off of a petrol station. Massive Vauxhall banner. Look at that SO one. Yeah, loads of stuff. Check out this Texaco thing. It's huge. Old Haynes manuals. Yeah, you get the picture. Loads of really cool random stuff. I will leave their Facebook page in the description just in case you saw something that you fancy for your garage. Well, there you are. There's two Ford. Here's a moment really for you. Are you sure? Oh, uh. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> you gave me a Ford sign last year. Thank no you fun. so much. No that's, that's Sue's husband, Hugh, who is the other owner. No, thank you so much. No I will put them up in my garage. I've already put the other one up in my garage. Good, good, good. Remember. I oh, uh, appreciate it. No problem. That's really cool. Thank you. Well, that was very kind of Hugh and Sue to give me yet more stuff to hang on my garage wall. Massive thanks to you guys if you're watching this video. And yeah, we will be stopping at that sign shop in August during the summit run. Now I'm pretty sure we are now gonna go and get Porrig's Mark II Escort rally car ready. I don't think we've got time for any more surprise stops. <laughs> We've made it to Porig's place. We're finally going to be getting his rally car on the trailer. It's Porig's dog. again to Maria if you're watching we're on our way check this place out oh my day staying in the castle and we join paparazzi Pat at the castle good to see you again mate cheers <laughs> if you watch the videos from last year's trip to Ireland you'll know that Pat is not only a really good cameraman but also a decent pilot the crash is strong today <laughs> He was a good pilot once upon a time. Got a mm. cheeky chicken chow mein and spring rolls. Yeah. All right, so time for me to get some sleep. I'll come outside to end the video because I don't want to wake anyone else up who's here. But yeah, quite a quiet day today compared to the previous two, but an awesome day nonetheless. Tomorrow is the inner show and run and I can't wait. So if you thought this video was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you're new to keep up to date with all my future uploads and check the links in the description to my social media and my website. I'll also leave a link to my Patreon down there for anyone who wants to jump on that. Massive thanks as always to all of my patrons. I really appreciate your support. I'll also leave my email address in the description for anyone who wants to get in touch with me but other than that until next time thanks for watching